I hope you're ready for another episode of Regen Rovers. I assume you are because you've just clicked on the video. I'm certainly ready for this. I have a plan today. I've got a mug of tea. It makes everything better. Football Manager Central mug that was kindly sent to me last year. And we're taking on Dorchester Town. And we're going to roll straight into Paul's Big Day Out feature today. Because Dorchester has... I, I went there when I was little a couple of times. We went to the Dinosaur Museum. I've always been enthusiastic about dinosaurs. Especially the legendary Stegosaurus. <laughs> In fact, I have a couple of stegosauruses here. That's a Playmobil version, and that's like a plastic thing made in China, probably. Yep. But I'd recommend going to Dorchester for the simple reason it's got a dinosaur museum. It's a lovely town as well, although I can't really remember much about the town because uh, I was so young. We used to go to Swanage quite often on holiday, and um, that's in the area. Uh, and we visited the Dinosaur Museum in Dorchester. Now, a lot of you are going to despair at the fact that I've changed the tactic again. You're saying, Paul, stop being a tinker man. Just stick with something. And I promise you I'm going to attempt to try my all to stick with the tactic that I have created now. Some of you will be rejoicing because I've actually got wing backs now rather than just playing wingers or wide midfielders or defensive wingers. I've gone for traditional wing backs. Now the reason why I didn't do this originally was because I had no players that can play in the wing back role. But I'm training players up to be that. I feel Sean Howcroft can be a decent wing back. Because he's okay defensively and defensively at this level compared to the rest of our team. So I feel like he can, he can play there quite well. He is improving as a player as well at the moment, which is good news. And on the left, I've been playing Greg Winter, who has been demoted to the reserves uh, over the past, well, almost season, I guess. He was in the first team towards the start of last season when I signed him, but I didn't feel he was good enough. However, he's all right. I mean, all right with five crossing and dribbling. But that's, that's actually pretty good for me going forwards. Defensively, he's all right as well. He's actually quite strong mentally and physically. But I'm training him up as a wing back. I'm also training the likes of Markland and Chris Breach and I think Sam Palmer and, and Leon Thompson, who are all wingers or full backs, to play as a wing back. Because I'm going to try and stick with this. This is what I'm going to roll with. Three at the back seems to be quite effective when I'm playing wing backs. But the thing with football manager is full backs, wing backs, they're all overpowered still on FM17, meaning without any full backs in my team, teams are just penetrating down the sides and causing all sorts of problems for my centre backs. And it's not necessarily their fault that they've been pretty shoddy this season. I've also got rid of the attacking midfielder because I don't really have someone that can play there to an amazing level. Of course, we've got Dr. Jones and Joe Gordon who are cracking players in their own right, but not quite to the standard I want them to be. Dr. Jones isn't really an advanced playmaker because he's he's only got not five on passing and seven on vision. So it's not great, is it? And Joe Gordon actually has pretty good vision, 12, seven passing. He's already, he's actually arguably better than Dr. Jones in that role. And he has been pretty decent in the under 23s recently, as is Dan Ormsby, who has once again broken into the first team. He has scored a goal lately. We'll have a look at the recent fixtures in a bit, but you can see Jack Young has pushed up to being top goal scorer again. Brad, uh, Bradley Berry dropped off a bit lately um, in this new formation. He's more of the creative striker setting up Jack Young, who's playing as the deep line forward. So that's what I'm rolling with. These are the team instructions. Uh, I've called the tactic talking about regeneration. So we've got rid of the attack of the regions all together now and we're rolling with this. Now the reason why I'm such a tinker man is because it got to like FM13. Before FM13 you could just play a plug and play tactic essentially. You could create your own tactic and it would work and you would just change it when it stopped working. FM13 it sort of became apparent that you had to adapt more to your opposition adapt your tactics to who you're playing and you would have to adapt throughout the match and I've gone with that philosophy ever since however maybe on FM17 it doesn't quite work the same it's maybe more about morale so trying to use your team talks and your in-game team talks which I've always been not great at using to improve the morale of your players and give them a confidence boost throughout the match. When I've, whenever I've been changing team instructions, it doesn't always work, apart from the famous Dr. Jones goal, of course. If I hadn't tinkered then, 
we wouldn't have the series wouldn't be going so you have to be thankful that I tinkered at that opportunity however I guess I tinker too much I know I tinker too much and some of you are getting very frustrated with it but I'm going to stick with this because it has actually been working recently now in the last two episodes we've lost four games Today, the aim is to, to win all three games. I'm going to be um, doing three games today that I'm playing. We've got Dorchester Town, who are 20th in the league, so in the relegation zone. We've got uh, Whiteleaf in the FA Trophy first round. We managed to qualify for that, which is good news. And Concord Rangers, who are 18th. So two relegation battle matches today and a game we really should be winning in the FA Trophy. Now, since the last episode where we lost against Western Supermare and Hendon, we did lose the next game 3-2 against Basingstoke, and this is when I'd had enough, because the defence just were not working. It was apparent they weren't working. Jack Young got a couple goals, we'll have a look at them now. Mm -hmm. My mouth's full of tea. Yes, Jack Young got a couple goals, which was good. This is a pretty lucky deflection, as you can see there. Uh, but they were just too strong for us today. We managed to get it back to 2-2, but they did score the winner in the end. And Yeah, I kind of just had enough by this point. Barry with a great assist for Young then. So we reverted to wing-backs, and I think it was against Hemel Hempstead. Anyway, let's just check. Yes, it... Oh, no, it wasn't. This is when I played defensive uh, midfielders. I brought back the attacking... The advanced playmaker to central midfield. So it was ever... I was evolving it over these games, as you can see here, just getting the team used to it. But against Hemel Hempstead, who, were current, who, were at, who at the time were boss of the table, we played very well. You can see 26 shots to their 11, but we only found the back of the net once through Jack Young. And Dominic Moan, what a name, scored the equaliser for them. So overall, it was a disappointing result. We really should have been winning this. It was a lovely little dink from Young to get his eighth goal of the season and he's he's on a, on a bit of a roll now the first game we did imp deploy wing backs was against Maidstone United and it worked very well uh, considering they dominated the game in shots defensively we were much more solid and we didn't concede until the 61st minute and by that point we were winning the game Grant War made a mistake for the goal I think we'll have to have a look I've been alternating alternating Grant War and Bradley uh, because I'm not really entirely sure who's the best one at the moment. But this was the first goal anyway. It was a brilliant counter-attack. This is what it's all about. I've got it on counter. It worked wonders. Mills got the goal with his alternative haircut once again. And we then went 2-0 up through Bradley Berry. This is the last goal he scored. His seventh goal of the season. Needs to get another couple soon, I think. But this is a delightful finish into the top right-hand corner. They did get a goal back. It's from a corner. I can't remember the goal. Let's have a look. Oh, yes. War basically dropped the ball in midair when the corner was whipped in but it didn't matter we held on to a very important win and then a very impressive win against Kinstonian who were I think at the time second in the table remarkable performance from us we it was they had more possession but I've got a counter tactic now my team just doesn't really suit playing lots of possession I don't think we're very good on the ball though when we when we want to be that was delightful play keeper should probably have done better there but Young got his ninth goal of the season then Adam Fox with his first goal for the club I think it's his first goal let's have a look at this Berry into to winter into Fox had gone up I think for a free kick of some description and he's been brilliant at the back he's heading everything away the last few games he has been sensational uh, Dan Ormsby got a third as well his first of the season he's only made a few appearances for us but this is nice stuff Latham with the assist who also came off the bench they worked well together to make it 3-0 we did lose against Hampton and Richmond we are going to lose games of course They're, we're playing some tough teams and it was a 91st minute winner we're very unlucky in this. They just pummeled us with the shots and they finally scored a couple goals. We did take the lead through Jack Young, but unfortunately we couldn't hold on. But encouraging signs. We are we are playing pretty well. We're holding teams off at the back. It's a lovely finish from Young, a good cross from Berry as well. And we are through to the first FA Cup trophy. FA trophy, sorry, not FA Cup. FA trophy first round. Thanks to a 1-0 win against Thurrock. It was a bit of a tough ask. We did play very well at all against a team that are, it's not East Thurrock, it's Thurrock, who are in the regional league. So it wasn't the best performance here, but we got a clean sheet. And once again, Berry with the assist and Young with the finish to win us the game. That was probably the game I've been least impressed by because we only had four shots against weaker opposition. So today, Dorchester Town. But first of all, let's have a fan corner. <laughs>
thank you for all the stuff you're tweeting and, and commenting on YouTube. A lot of it has been angry. But I know you're, you're joking. Some of you may be a bit angry about the tactics. I know you're a bit angry about the tactics, me changing them all the time. But let's stick with this for the time being. I'm not going to make too many changes in matches. I'm just going to use the team talk facilities, I think. And I'm going with mm, Bradley. or Let's go with Bradley in goal. He's got a better form rating over the last five games. Although War over the season does have a 6.91 average rating. But let's give Stephen Bradley a run out today. Ulla Kunli, Fox and Simmons seem to be playing pretty well together at the back. Now I have signed a new player. I need to talk about a few things actually. Yeah, transfer wise. So I've signed one player, Charlie Lofts, another centre back. You can play left or right back as well. Possibly you could play wing back if we really want. But he was recommended to me by a scout. He looks all right. He's only 90 quid a week, which is quite a lot, but he's not on some crazy appearance bonus. He might turn out to be the main right central defender instead of Ulu Kunli. Ulu Kunli's in form at the moment. The only thing that does worry me about Lofts is his aggression of 19, which could be a problem. He might go and beat up a steward or a ball boy at some point, which wouldn't be good press. So welcome to the club, Charlie Lofts. Uh, secondly, good news, really good news. The board, uh, well, Eddie Mitchell, our chairman, has been pushing money into the club regularly. I don't know if it's because he's just worried about the finances and I've been screwing the club over financially. But you can see we've got a balance of 292 grand. He keeps pumping money in here about four times, four or five times this season already. He has pumped money into the club, which is nice, I suppose. So I thought I'd ask for new youth facilities and training facilities, which is imperative to our growth. And he's said yes, which is... <laughs> Big surprise, very pleased. They're gonna be finished on the 9th of October next year. So we've got 10 months to wait for them. The new stadium, of course, is still a year and a half away. So we're still playing in Broadfield Stadium in Crawley. So three things are on the way. Hopefully they don't get canceled this time. Because if we look, we've, we've got poor training facilities and basic youth facilities. So it's not great. Uh, and those are only gonna be boosted to, I guess, basic training facilities and below average youth facilities or something the first time round and that's spending like 150 to 200 grand on both of them so it's going to be a long progress to get to the standard where we we want to be let's submit the team some of you have been asking about why why am i not loaning players from better teams in higher divisions essentially no one wants to come or clubs don't want to loan them to me because they want their players to be playing with better players even clubs in the conference, the division above us, don't want to loan players to us. I've even attempted signing players from Ebbsfleet, for example, in our own division, and they don't want to. They're just snobs, basically. So Dorchester playing a 4-1-4-1 formation. We really need to be beating them. Uh, I didn't actually show you where we are on the table, did I? Now, it's all about boosting the morale of all the players, in my opinion. Let's give a boost to, to Woodland and to Dion Mills as well. And start the match. My nose is really itchy. What is going on? Uh, so yes, we're 17th in the league. We are currently five points above Dorchester who are in the relegation zone. That could all change today though if we lose this game. We can't be losing again. We've lost four games in a row in live com matches. That can't happen today, surely. Although, <laughs> we've got to the 42nd minute with nothing happening. Here's Liam Simmons who blasts it over Be Berry. Berry has to score. He doesn't, it's a good save by the keeper, but he has to be finishing that. Ah, that's annoying. Okay, Woodland with the corner, whips it across, and it's plucked out the air by Voss. Ah. I still have Sylvester around, by the way, for those wandering, but we've also got two Stegosauruses on the desk today as well. There's just so much going on. I've even got a penguin here as well. He's just sitting chilling there. I'm like a three-year-old child, I know. We can still win this. I think we have to go attacking today. There's no point leaving it on the counter. I know they'll be pushing forward desperate for a win, but we have to take the game to Dorchester. That's the only change I'm going to make. I said no tactical changes, but I'm sure going from counter to attacking is fine. I, I think so anyway. I'm going to calmly say there's a lot more to come from you, Jack Young. This tactic probably will have less goals involved. Better for our hearts. Better for our defence. Maybe not so exciting for the neutrals. But I don't care about the neutrals, do we? We care about Regen Rovers and you guys, the fans, and me, the manager, and the players. That's what we care about. 
You probably don't care about the manager that much. Here's Woodland. Can we get a goal here? It's into Jack Young, who's tackled quite easily, and now they can counter. The only problem with Jack Young playing as a deep line forward, he can't actually dribble. Here's Berry. Berry can dribble, but it's quite important for an advanced forward to dribble. Here's Woodland. Oh, that's a bad tackle. Red card, ref. Red card. Two. Yes. That was a two-footed, disastrous tackle on Woodland, who fortunately has both his legs intact. We're down to 18th place, as it says. We have to take advantage of this. But I'm not allowed to make changes, according to you guys. I can't do any tactical changes. <laughs> Jack Young. Into Sheriff, into Mills, out wide to Winter, put a good good ball in, Greg. It's a lovely ball. Barry! Barry couldn't bury it. He's had two opportunities. If that was Latham, that may have found the back of the net. And it's the 73rd minute. I'm going to bring Latham on as the target man. Target man support. Young will go to advanced forward. So we'll change that round. Dion Mills is going to come off for good old Joe Gordon. I mean, am I am I seriously not allowed to do anything, Tatsy? You get annoyed with me when I change things. But surely we have to do something. I'll, I'll do one thing. Higher tempo. Am I allowed to do that, guys? This is just my management style. I have to I change things to try and win the game. Uh, so, please don't shoot me. But it's going to end nil-nil because that's passionate. Push forward. Let's go for that. That's a team talk thing rather than a tactical change, I guess. But I think it's going to finish 0-0. But like I said, it solidified the defence. But against a a team in the relegation zone, we really should be beating them, not drawing 0-0. Although it's a draw away from home. That's okay. It's an improvement on the last couple of episodes. I'm going to say you were unlucky. Ugh, Bradley. But I'm going to say I, don't, I, I didn't like... I'm very unhappy with Bradley. He wasn't good at all. So, oh, we're staying in 17th place, though, despite the 0-0 draw. Every point counts, doesn't it? Every point is a help to our plight. 21 points now we're on. Five above the relegation zone. Five wins, six defeats, eight... Oh, wait, five wins, six draws, eight defeats, 25 goals scored, 31 conceded. We're actually winning under 23 games as well. It's, it's pretty impressive. Dan Ormsby with another two goals for the under 23s. So he's, he's playing really well. Goals wise, 12 goals for pointing and well, pointing has been scoring in the under 18s. So I've put him into the, the under 23s to see how he does. Dan Olmsby scored 12 goals for the under 23s. I'm going to play him against uh, Whiteley for whoever they are in the FA Trophy. What a name, Max McQueen, eh? Turned 17 today. Does he deserve a full, well, a part time contract? Probably not. We'll see how he gets on in the under 18s. Oliver Sparks injured for three to four weeks. Someone in the last episode, episode 20 actually. That said he, Oliver Spark should be an electrician. That should be his day job. Nice stuff. Sorry, I forgot who who said that. I should really have, have said. But anyway, <laughs> that's a lovely idea. Oliver Sparks, the electrician. We've got Jack Young, the plumber. If you follow Regen Rovers on Twitter, you'd have seen all of this backstory to some of the players' lives. Don't actually know what's going to happen to Oliver Sparks because he is a left midfielder. I think I'm training him up as a, a left wing back. I better check actually. But now he's injured, I can't actually do that but the thing about Sparks is he's a very good crosser of the ball but defensively there's nothing there to him so I don't know if he could really pull off that role he might just have to because there's there's no position for him now Cheltenham have offered me an interview decline right then FA Trophy Day it's the first round the last couple seasons we've crashed out in the third qualifying round so we need to make the most of this and progress in the FA Trophy. Sticking with Bradley in goal, but I'm going to put Lofts into the team for Ulla Kunli to give him a run out. Simmons is also going to have a rest. In comes Richard Wilson. Howcroft and Winter will stay as wingbacks because they need to just get used to that role, don't they? Uh, Dion Mills is going to come out four. I don't have that many central midfielders. It's something I could probably work on. I'm actually going to put Joe Gordon in there as the box-to-box -box midfielder. And I'm going to play Ormsby and Young together. Ormsby is, Ormsby is going to play there. Berry on the bench along with Paul Latham. Leon Thompson will come into the bench for Dion Mills. Harrison Lane's broken into the first team and is my, my substitute. He can, he can basically play anywhere along the back line and could probably do a job at a wing back as well if necessary that's the reasoning for him being there please smash that like button as usual that'd be much appreciated loving 
the love that you're showing this series still. I'm, I know there's loads of you fully engrossed in it, which is just fantastic. As am I, I'm, I'm loving managing Regen Rovers. It's an honour to manage such a, a brilliant club. And today we really should be winning. And I'm going to go attacking from the start. I'm going to just say good luck rather than putting any unnecessary pressure on the team. I will give a passionate team talk to the defence though. But can Al Ormsby keep his run going? He scored lots of goals for the under-23s. Let's hope he can get a goal or two today for the full team. I did stick him into the game for the third qualifying round of the FA Trophy, but it didn't come, it didn't really work for him. So I had to put Jack Young on, and he scored the winner to get us into this round. Good tackle there, Woodland into Young. What's he going to do with it? Young over to Howcroft, into Gordon. Lovely ball through to Ormsby. They've combined well in the under 23s a couple of times, in fact. And this is a chance for Jack Young, who hits the post with a header from point blank range, keeping the ball nicely here. Uh oh, this looks this looks bad. It's one nil to White Leaf. I think there's they're all greyed out players as well with like seven on everything. Well that's not good enough. I'm gonna be aggressive at half time. I'm just going to be more forceful with my team talks basically. Richard Wilson at fault for that goal, six point four. I'm gonna bring on Harrison Lane for him. I'm being harsh now. I'm not modly, modly cuddling, mod, modly cuddling them. Let's go with that. I think more of you are probably annoyed with me changing the formation rather than the actual instructions in game. So I don't see there a problem. I don't see a problem um, changing the actual team instructions when necessary. Like if I need to go higher tempo, maybe we should go a bit more direct now and pump it up there. Possibly. I don't know. I, I don't see any problem with doing that. Maybe you guys do. I don't know. Let me know. But I feel sometimes you just have to make changes in games to, to win them, to get something out of them. You can't just expect to leave it and for it to... Maybe I shouldn't be so quick at making changes after I concede a goal. Just let it flow a little bit and see how it goes. And if it doesn't work, then make a change. I think the thing is I've got it on key highlights, so we do run out quite soon. Uh, we run out of time quite soon and this is a corner this can't be a defeat we have to be winning these games good save by Bradley catching that we've not been in the game this second half nothing's happened for us but we've cleared the ball there we lose it but here's Woodland over the top for Jack Young who has to finish this he's one on one and he doesn't that was just uh, we've had two clear cut chances and two half chances how have we not won this Jack Young, you're coming off. You've disappointed me today. And Latham's going to come on as well. But he's going to play as the target man. Jack Young has let the team down today. But free kick for Woodland. He scores! 1-1. One, one. We're back in the game. I'm just keeping it on overload though. And we're going to pump the ball into Latham. It's a lovely free kick. I think that's his first goal of the season. Maybe we're going to go to replay. Oh no, it's extra time. That's good news. I can't be bothered with a replay. One goal is all we need. And I've got a substitute left. Leon Thompson. I'm going to put Howcroft into the middle. And I'm going to put Leon Thompson in for Gordon. Oh no, I don't have a substitute left. What am I talking about, Paul? Okay, taking more risks. Closing down a bit more. Jack Young's let me down today. Howcroft into Lofts. Lovely ball. Winter! Oh, crossbar. We've been so close today. Five half chances, two clear-cut chances. On a better day, we could have scored a lot more chances. How about a, an in-game team talk for the last few minutes? Passionate. Push forward. Let's go for that to everyone. Everyone push forward. It's going to penalties. 25 seconds to go. We're going to lose on penalties, aren't we? Penalties it is. Oh, wait, there's no penalties. Maybe it does go to... So there's extra time. Plus, there's going to be a replay. How is that allowed? Seriously? What? What's the point in playing extra time? It's just knackering my team out even more. Unnecessarily. We didn't even get through. We have to play another game. And we played extra time. That's just bloody irritating. Well, four games today. Nice long special for you. Farnborough have offered a contract to Chris Breach. I really don't know whether to keep him. His contract's expired. He's only on a you know, pay as you play thing, £150 when he does play, but he never plays. I don't know whether to let him go. Let's see how much he wants. What would happen if I just went for, like, nothing? Part-time contract, 20 quid a week. What do you say to that, my friend? He wants a lot of money when he plays, and I just don't 
Phil. I don't feel that's a sensible approach. A lot of you have been saying I shouldn't really go for the appearance fee based things. Second round of the FA Trophy draw then, we will be taking on Sutton United of the division above us if we get through. So that would be tough, but well worth it in my opinion to take on some better opposition. We have to beat Whiteleaf, don't we? Come on. I I'm actually going to play Leon Thompson as, as the wing back today. We need to get some rotation going. Winter's going to stay there though. I'm going to play Whittingham instead of Sheriff. Jack Young will come out for Berry, who will play up front alongside Ormsby. Joe Gordon is going to come out for D uh, for Dr. Jones. Dion Mills will come in for Woodland. Just a bit of difference here. And Richard Wilson will come out for Charlie. Lots of re rotation. I'm rotating the team just to keep them fit, basically. And Harrison Lane's coming to keep going to come in for Charlie Lofts who will be on the bench. So that's the team. Whoever we play, we should be beating Whiteleaf at the end of the day. If we just look at them, they're playing in the eighth tier of English football. Two below us, isn't it? Ryman League Division 1 South. All their players are greyed out players. Remember this guy playing against us. So they've all got sort of average ratings for everything. So in a way, they're better than us for certain attributes. But they don't have anyone with like above nine, I, I probably would say. On anything, yeah. I mean, they're okay. They're actually okay players because they're well-rounded, and you can essentially turn them into any position you want. Yo ho ho, and a bottle of rum. Go out there, relax, and play your natural game. That's not quite worked, has it? Well, Doctor Jones is demo demotivated after I said just relax and play your. I'm trying different things, trying to find the optimum team talk for these guys. We're going to exploit the flanks. I know I'm making changes even before the match, but what was I saying? I adapt to the opposition. I see a weakness in their team. Let's go down the sides. They've only got fullbacks. They don't have any cover. Then again, we've only got wingbacks. We don't have any cover, but we've got three at the back. So they hopefully have the brains to just go over and cover. If necessary, as Winter almost scores a, a cross goal. We're on the offensive already in this match. Here's Berry. Oh, it's into it's into Orbsby. It's a brilliant block. He should have scored. It was good defending, though, to be fair. And Dion Mills, of all people, is going to take the corner. He's whipped it across. Will, Will, Mills should really be in there with his heart. Why is, that, why is everyone running back? I've, the Winter puts the cross in. All my players are on the way back already. Getting the express back to the penalty, my own penalty area. This is a boring game. We've had one shot each. Maybe exploiting the flanks isn't going to work. Let's just turn that off then. Let's go for the old pump it into the box. Go a bit more direct in this second half. I'm going to assertively say, keep working hard. And I'll say to the strikers, you weren't that bad. I have faith in you though. Dan Ormsby's not working. It's not working out for him or Leon Mills today. Looking at the analysis, cross completion, 0%. So crosses isn't going to work against this team, I think. So we're just going to pump it up there and see see what happens, I guess. Keep thinking we're the green team. Here's Berry. What's he going to do? Berry. Bradley Berry. Come on. He's got 14 on dribbling and he's easily beaten his man and he's fired it wide. If only he had 14 on finishing as well. It was a good effort, though, from him. That 81st minute, nothing's happening in this game. It's really weird. I'm going to take Dr. Jones off for Howcroft. And Dan Ormsby's going to come off for Latham. He's going to play as a target man support. Kept it on counter because I don't want to change things too much because you'll shout at me. It's gone to extra time. I think I have to go attacking now, don't I? Calm. One goal is going to be enough. It will be, realistically. Let's go attacking. Let's push the defence up a bit. Turn up the tempo. Get stuck in and just do something. And I'm going to bring off Bradley Berry for Jack Young, who can maybe save the day for us again. We can't lose against Whiteleaf. Come on, guys. <sighs> We've gone back to that first season point where it's pretty painful football. At least we're not conceding hundreds of goals, though. What would you rather watch, though? Maybe you would rather watch me lose 3-2 every week than draw 0-0. I don't know. At least we get a point if we draw 0-0. Here's Latham who fires it over the bar. Let's go overload. Screw it. Overload flexible. It's up to Latham. It's into Jack Young. Latham blocked. Latham scores. We don't need to go overload now. Let's go back to counter our usual tactic. We know it's solid. Oh, thank goodness for that. Latham's fifth goal of the season. We're certainly getting more different strikers scoring this season. It's, I mean, it's an open goal. The keeper's just standing there after the initial dive. Finally, something to cheer about. The team's knackered. Fortunately, some of these players won't have to play against Concord Rangers. And that's the end. We've struggled past Whiteleaf two extra times. That was a let-off. Really, what? I mean, the players... Oh, come on, it was a let-off. 
I'm pleased with the defense though. <laughs> That's just really confused them. I shouldn't laugh. I'm destroying the morale of some of these players. Awusu's got injured. I forgot about Awusu. How's he doing in the under 23s? 6.92 average rating in the actual competitive under 23 games. Maybe he deserves a chance in the first team again. Who knows? Right, Chris Breach is going to Farnborough. Off he goes. Ugh. There's no point hanging on, on to all these players, is there, for the sake of it? It's just wasting the money and the resources at the club. Adam Fox, 16 interceptions made. Man of the match. He's turning into a very solid player for me. Let's just have a look at him. Here he is, Adam Fox. He's solid. His positioning is excellent, which really does help. I'm surprised at how well he's been heading lately, because he's only got seven on heading. He's quite tall though, 188 centimetres, so that helps, I suppose. Concord Rangers then. At home, we welcome the Canvey Island team to Rygate for a pretty crucial battle, because we're both in trouble this season. We are, we've dropped down to 19th place. This is our game in hand. Uh, both of us have a game in hand. And if we win this, we can go all the way up the table to 12th. That's, that's pretty amazing, really, isn't it? <laughs> However, a loss keeps us in a lot of trouble. Only four points above the relegation zone. This is crucial. This is a massive, massive game. We can be mid-table. We finished 15th last year, remember? And at the halfway point, almost the halfway point, We'll be in a mid-table position if we can win this. So I'm going back with my preferred 11, although Bradley Berry has dropped to the bench. That's the only guy who I would usually start up front alongside Young, but he's not been very good at all the last few games. And Dan Ormsby has only scored one goal for the first time, but he first team, but he has scored plenty for the under 23. So I'm putting him putting a little card talk. Let's start again. I'm putting him alongside Jack Young. Submit team. It's almost Christmas time, 23rd of December, on the save. It's not that far off Christmas in real life, is it? Capua Brite Ferro, Redden's Laude Domino. So tight in the mid-table area this season, isn't it? Both of us can move up to 12th in the table with a win. It's just crazy. Let's give the fans something to cheer today. Of course, we've welcomed the, the team to Crawley, just down the road from Rygate, rather than to actual Rygate. It's pretty mental how <laughs> Regen Rovers now has over 800 followers on Twitter. It's insane. Imagine if we get to the point where we've got more followers than actual Conference South teams. There's not many fans here today, though, but... Oh, no, there's more now. There didn't look like there was any before. Let's get a win, then, and move up the table. We're unbeaten today in today's episode. I know we've only scored one goal, and it was an extra... No, two goals, and it was an extra time goal that won us the only game of today. I hope you've enjoyed this four game special. I know there's not really been a huge amount of action and once again it's gone to half time but surely you'd rather this than losing every game 5-2. It being very frustrating and us not actually going anywhere. With this tactic it's more solid defensively. We might actually be able to climb up the table and finish mid-table comfortably this season. Let's hope so anyway. Oh, are we going to get any highlights in this second half? Come on, you younglings! Ah. Yeah. That was a bit aggressive. Oh, Mills, can have we got a chance here? Ormsby! Who's in the ball? Too easily. Howcroft. Into Dion Mills. Into Woodland. Through to Jack Young, who scores! Oh, thank you. Twelfth goal of the season for him. His first of the day. It's from a throw-in from Halgrove Mills into Woodland, who gets this. He's, he's an assist machine, he is. And he's oh, clinical from Young. Young he's just blasted it home for 1-0. Some changes. Dan Ormsby's going to come off for Latham, who will play it as the target man support, as usual. But I will keep Jack Young as a deep line forward, but on attack mode instead. And that's all I'm going to do for now. Can we hang on to this? 20 minutes to go. Here come Concord Rangers. It's over the top. Where's the defence? And it's... Penalty, Gareth Sheriff gives it away. Gareth Sheriff, baby! What are you doing? And Cole is stepping up to try and blast one past Bradley. Stephen Bradley, come on, do me proud. I've put faith in you today. And doesn't save it. <sighs> he got down quite slowly. I feel like he was going the right way. He could have actually saved that. And the draw only keeps us in 19th place. It's just so close. Fox is knackered I think I'll have to bring him off for Harrison Lane and Sheriff gave away the goal but I think I'll have to keep him on Dion Mills 
will come off for Joe Gordon, who I will push forward. Now, I know I'm making a change, but I, I feel I just want to win. I want to win. Two minutes. I'm going to do the team talk right now. Concentrate. Don't concede a last minute goal, guys. Oh, is this an opportunity? Woodland headed away. It's going to be an opportunity for them, isn't it? Oh, great tackle by Sheriff over the top, but it's not to the right player. Gordon was never going to reach that. And with 25 seconds to go, I think this is going to peter out into another draw. We've got to that stage where we're drawing lots of games again, guys. But that's just the nature of this. It's more solid. We're defensively solid, at least. And can Young get a shot away? No. That's it. We stay in 19th position. Five points above the relegation zone, though. What do I say? I'm happy? Ah, oh, crap's sake. Look, they're all nervous, so I thought if I say I'm happy with a draw, then they might be a bit more positive, but they've all switched off. However, it is incredibly close. Look at this. 22 points 19th, 22 points Oxford City. They're also on minus six goal difference. 23 points East Stoke United on minus six. Western Supermare, 23 points. Concord Rangers, 23 points. And the goal difference is all very close. And we're only... We're 11 points of the playoffs. We're not going to get playoffs today. But anywhere from, you know, ninth, Willstone are five points above us. And down, I would say, we can we can catch up with. We just have to stay ahead of Hemel Hempstead, Dorchester and Gosport, who are having pretty awful seasons. But we're one game away from the halfway point of the season. If we can get a win, that would be 25 points. Last season, we got 52, which... Uh, 51, sorry. So 25 would be under what we managed last year at the halfway point if you know what I mean however we're on a good run we're unbeaten in a few games I know there's a lot of draws in there and it's we're not scoring many goals at the moment I've, I've found something though that's solid we conceded a penalty today Sheriff stupidly gave away a penalty but the next few games are pretty pretty important we've got Gosport in there who are in the relegation zone the next video I think we'll do the FA Trophy second round match against Sutton United that's a big game for the club I'll probably show Wildstone and Sutton United as I've already shown Ebb Street this season so we'll go with Wildstone and Sutton United keep your eye out for that please hit your like hit the hit your like button hit my like button uh, yeah on this video subscribe if you haven't done so already Say hi in the comment section below and I will see you in episode 23.